there's one voice that you can trust in local television news. What we really have to figure out is how this affects the water supply on the west side of the valley. Keith Martin of 28 Eyewitness News. He's the voice of knowledge. Well, what's that going to do to tax rates in Pennsylvania? The voice of authority. If that checks out, we're going to have to send the crew to Harrisburg. The voice of understanding. It is an extraordinarily joyful time for this young 28 family. 28 Eyewitness Just News with Keith Martin, the most trusted voice in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Uh, let's pick up the phone. The phone Please number do. is toll-free, 1-877-480-9474, or 826-1227. We're going to cut over to Jim, but let's get everybody singing. Come on. Ebony and Ivory, we're together in perfect harmony. <laughs> <laughs> no one said we were professional. <laughs> Does this mean you're stopping? I think, I think we're done. Oh, I th Outstanding. I think we just raised a hundred million dollars to On make stop. Do I need an agent now? You need an agent, all right. Uh, you'll probably need a bail bondsman after that. Uh, that was un <laughs> guys outstanding. Outstanding. Remember, remember, we still have the kitty, the kitty pool and Italian ice for two hundred dollars. Okay. Does the song go with that? Maybe. We hope not. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's all legal. Cool J. It's out. All legal. Thank you so much for making the long haul. Call it. Keep it away Call from it. me. Keep calling. Call the number. I love the cash. We'll stop this. Standing underneath the banner here at WBRE TV in Wilkes-Barre, I'm Keith Martin. We have gentlemen. If you'd step in in this corner. We have Bill O'Boyle, the chairman of the Telethon this year. We have Joe Malazzo, who is the chairman of the board of Make-A-Wish Foundation. And a very important guest in this corner, Tom Foley, representing the Foley Law Firm. So what we're going to do first is do the business at hand. Then we're going to talk about what this business will allow Make-A-Wish to do for the children of northeastern Pennsylvania. Tom, if you would like to officiate with the presentation on behalf of the Foley Law Firm. Uh, Bill and Joe, on behalf of the members of the Foley Law Firm, I'd like to present you with this check for $8,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Northeastern Pennsylvania. We're happy to be able to help you in our own small way with the wonderful work you guys do. As you know, I'm very familiar with the work you do uh, through my wife, Laureen, who's a board member also. And we're just, again, very pleased to be able to help. Well, Tom, on behalf of the Foundation, on behalf of the Telethon, we want to thank you for this check, which represents sponsorship of the final hour of the Telethon. We're sorry you and Lori will not be able to attend the Telethon this year. You'll be, you have other plans. You'll be out of town. But thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This will make a lot of children happy this year. Thank you. Joe, on, thank you, sir. as the chairman of the board of the foundation, what will you do with that? Well, Keith, uh, this is going to help to put a lot of smiles on a lot of children's faces. Uh, uh, Tom Foley, the Foley Law Firm, uh, this is their second year coming to bat for us at the telethon. Uh, they're not only good friends of Make-A-Wish, but personal friends, good, sincere people, people that want to see uh, a difference in the lives of so many special children. And again, as Bill said, Tom, we thank you. Tom, let me just ask you, this obviously is a labor of love. It, it reflects a tremendous commitment, corporate citizenship on the part of the Foley Law Firm. Why? Uh, as I mentioned before, my wife, Laurie, has been involved heavily with Make-A-Wish. Uh, she is a board member. I've learned about the wonderful things that they've done. I've personally uh, talked to her and uh, uh, seen what the organization has done for many children and their families. And did you have any difficulty in talking to other members of the firm saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to get behind this? Was, uh, was this one of those unanimous votes? It was one of those unanimous votes. Everybody uh, at our firm knows about the Make-Wish Foundation, and everybody was more than willing to help. And it looks like, I can see by the smile, I'm very proud to do so. Yes. Tom, I want to thank you on behalf of all of us here at WBRE-TV. I want to turn to Bill and say one 
heck of a fine job mustering the huge effort that's been reflected in what we've been able to do here today at the telethon. Well, thank you, Keith. And that's as a result of people like Tom and the, and the Foley Law Firm. People in this area have been outstanding in supporting the foundation. As uh, you may or may not know, all the money that we raise here in northeastern Pennsylvania stays here to take care of our children. We do not have to pay a national organization. So all the money that people donate, they bring in our foundation and we use it to put smiles on the kids of our, our wish children. Thank you very much, Bob. We'd better wrap it up here because I know Joe wants to get to the bank because he's already chomping at the bit to put smiles on those faces. Absolutely. Again, uh, Tom, thank you very much. And uh, have a great time this weekend. I think you will. <laughs> thank you. All right, you've seen it right here. $8,000 donated by the Foley Law Firm. And we're very proud to accept that. And we're going to put that money to work through the Make-A-Wish Foundation starting right now and right now we are in the home stretch thousand people in the eight counties served by the Hazelton Chapel the American Cancer Society my family has been touched by cancer. I are home from drill right now. My uniform form is hanging upstairs. I just drove up from here. It needs to be proven here again tonight and tomorrow to vindicate the work of all the volunteers over the past year to make possible the advances in treatment and care that are necessary. Be nice to the guy. He said, say a couple of nice things about him. So Dennis, I'm going to say two nice things. <laughs> the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, any way you choose. And that's what the guy is going back to uh, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. And that's what they fought for. It's for your right to stand up as soon as we sent out the invitations. From All right, are you ready? Yes, sir! One, two, one. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what respect looks like feels like, and sounds like. And you have earned my respect for doing that. Well, my father's generation fought in one World War II. They grew up during the Depression. They came back and built the country. I remember my father once or twice, he scouts any way you choose. And that's what the guy is going back to uh, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. And that's what they fought them out, to make sure that your educational experience is safe, sound, that your trip to and from school. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, this is an old home week for me in a number of respects. But we're getting a good start here. That's good. We got your attention. That's, I was always good at that. Are you ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Feeble. Feeble. <laughs> That was a unison passage in a, in, 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 in a big band number that we beat. Let's rip, rip this roof up. All right? Are you ready? Yes, sir! One, two, one. Are you ready? Well, if you have money invested in the stock markets, you probably have less than you did at the beginning of the week, and you know the wild ride your investments have been on this week. And one of our own has had a wild ride in this industry for decades, and he's getting set to begin a new venture. If there's any more snow, that. somebody may bust it for me. All right. See you later. Well, you may not have felt the earth move under your feet, but there was a disturbance in the force today as longtime WBRE assistant news director, assignment editor, reporter, and newsmakers host John Bendick retired. Now, to say John and I go back a long way is an understatement. Check out the haircuts and the sideburns. John Bendick now at McLaughlin headquarters. Okay, Keith, what we have now is 27 of 43 precincts reporting in the city of Wilkesbury. That's about 65% of the vote in, and Tom McLaughlin is leading Ann Urbanski by more than 1,400 votes. This is Pine Creek. The Indians called it Tyodotin, the River of Pine. The Owasi Rapids we're shooting are part of more than 50 miles of Pine Creek. We're sure of one thing. Pine Creek 
must be preserved for those who come next. And the WBRE Peacock softball season is over. The Peacocks losing tonight to Mr. Bill's all-star team, ending the campaign with a record of eight wins and 16 losses. And Keith, I want to make it official tonight. I will not be back as coach of the Peacocks next season. Many happy, proud moments for John in his long career. As he came out the door this afternoon, we noticed the color of each other's hair relative to the video you just saw. Those were not hair pieces, by the way. Those, that was our real hair uh, 22 years ago. Great man, great friend. He'll be missed, uh, and he'll still be around. He's left the woodpile a lot taller than when he found it. Well, March Madness is upon us. The Earth's orbit is aligned with Mars. And speaking of new ventures, we wish a very happy retirement to John Bendick, who has worn many hats here at WBRE-TV, most recently as assignment manager and 28 Newsmakers host. Today was John's last full day on the job. For the last 32 years, John has been a mentor and a friend to all of us. We will certainly miss him, and we certainly wish him well. Well, the lights are out tonight in California. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Steve has the great assignment. He's at the Tomato Festival in Pittston right now. So I happened to be walking down the hall and they said, we need a weatherman. Here I am, takes me back 35 years. Let's look at the school net right now. The temperature 84 degrees. If you've been outside, you know it is. You also know that it's windy. 26 mile an hour wind gusts walking down South Franklin Street just a few minutes ago. It felt like they were actually a little higher than that because you could see the tops of the trees swaying. Not much precipitation in the rain gauge after what we had yesterday. Now let's look at what's making our weather right now as we look across the typical west to east weather flow. And what you're seeing mostly is the remnants of some showers moving out to the northeast. Behind that is clear weather. So we're looking at a couple of nice days coming up ahead. The temperatures around the region right now you can see to the northwest it is much cooler. If you get down to the southeast, down towards Philadelphia, Atlantic City, 87, 86, 86 in Washington, right here in the heart of northeastern Pennsylvania, 82 degrees in most of the main sites that we're getting our reports from now along the school net. Now, here's what's going to happen. We have two large low pressure systems. We're sandwiched right in between here in the northeast. And the good thing that's happening here, they're pushing the rain to the northeast and they're keeping the rain to the southeast away from us. And what's happening behind that in the Great Lakes region as you're seeing the weather drop straight through. Now down in the tropics, and you have to forgive me because I haven't had a chance to look at much of this ahead of time, this is what we're watching. We're watching a swirling set of clouds down there in the Caribbean, just south of the, uh, the Dominican Republic, and so far it has not developed into anything really significant. And I'm going to leave it to Steve to give you more specific information about it. But what we are doing is watching it very carefully. I'm also watching the allergy alert. My voice is a little strained. We've been on a wonderful two-week train trip, did a lot of talking, and also the allergens in the air didn't help any. Saturday, 9.3, that's in the high range. We're going to drop off as the cooler air comes in behind it, 6.9 and then 6.0. That's mid-range, and that means we'll get the deep voice back probably by Monday. The forecast right now, the way it stands, mostly clear, patchy, dense fog, an overnight low of 57 degrees in the northern tier. And that stretches all the way from the Poconos across. In the mountain region, mostly clear and 62 degrees as that front moves completely through. The rain is gone, and what that means is nice weather overnight. Susquehanna Valley area, Mifflinburg, Millville, 61 degrees overnight, mostly clear skies. Again, we're in that nice pocket in between, sandwiched in between those two low pressure areas. And in the Valley Cities, Scranton High School, College Misericordia, Solomon Plains Junior High, we're going to have partly cloudy skies with patchy fog, 59 degrees, and that's not too bad. So our five-day pinpoint forecast, 82 on Saturday for the high. We've got mostly sun, partly cloudy Sunday. Got a chance of some showers in there, so do your good stuff on Saturday. Markedly cooler, 77, 78, 80, 82 as we go on into the week. And what we will have is partly cloudy skies, but lots of sunshine. It's the way it's supposed to be. So what you might want to do is do some uh, back-to-school shopping. I have to step out of the picture, but I can't go fire because I am tied to a microphone. So I can't go back over and talk to you guys, so I'll holler over <laughs> to you. All right, Keith, you're absolutely amazing. <laughs> 
he thought, I know he's a Packer fan, he pulled up Brett Favre and he called an audible at the line, changed the play and scored a touchdown. All right, good job, Keith. Thanks. We'll have Steve a little bit later in this newscast, and at least at 6. Well, another news, if you have school-aged children, you might have to help them with their homework. Let's change my to you will. And sometimes <laughs> that means science. I got it, Colonel. Yeah. Yeah. The angle's not, wow. not wide enough, though, my, my well, that's lens. That's what he thinks. Because I am, um, well, you know, some A parade that starts in Kingston and ends in downtown Wilkes-Barre. All right! This is a very old, a very historic parade, and there have been years when it hasn't been very well attended, quite frankly. This year, the attendance is overwhelming, but that doesn't surprise me because the people of the Wyoming Valley and northeastern and central Pennsylvania have done more than their fair share to form this country and to make it great. We need their support at this time, and especially those young men and women who are in Afghanistan and other parts of the world. We need that support, and uh, I'm just sorry that this isn't being broadcast live via satellite to Afghanistan. And the patriotism you see here is mirrored over here with crowds jumping in the chance to show off their red, white, and blue. To have them here today makes me confident that they're going to understand something about what this is all about and that it's not free. Somebody pays for everything that we have, always have and always will. In Wilkes-Barre, Denise Strelzik, 28 News. CYC, so you needed to find one old guy <laughs> to attend an awful lot of dinners up and down the valley. That this is one of the most enjoyable of the community to draw from and excellent choices. Uh, I predict the CYC will prosper in the years ahead under their leadership. And this isn't over till everyone gets home safely. That's an order from the Colonel. That, boys and girls, is respect. Take your seats. When you come to attention, your feet get on the floor, they're together. You're going to stand there and you're going to show respect and you're going to learn everything you can about this great country and all the other countries of the world. Flag, and that's wonderful, and I'm so thrilled to see all your flags today. green stuff if, uh, that's lying around the house. Oh. <laughs> Not laugh, you know. Right, exactly. So they would say, I mean, we did a show, uh, one of the Bob Newhart shows, and uh, we had this uh, guy on who was a uh, guy, I forget his last name now, but he was wonderful and he was just, he was this cuckoo. He was this colonel who was cuckoo. And, uh, and he was describing this trip he made to in the, the Amazon. And um, and he was going along about talking about the Amazon and going on and on. And then he said, and then this uh, spaceship stopped and picked us up. And, uh, and I'm, now I'm looking at him and I'm breaking up all week. I'm breaking up at this guy. And then uh, fi finally I said, well, we have to, we have, we're we have a oh. trip. Now, there, I, there, there was one line in it um, I always loved, which was he's congratulating the, the men on the, the, he said, you've just taken a full two minutes off the previous record.
Thank you very much. As I approached the city, I couldn't help but scan the skyline for the place where the landmarks stood. No matter how many times I'd been there before and had seen before and after pictures, I still could not picture what I would see or how I would feel. Walking down the concrete canyon streets just blocks away, everything looked deceptively the same. Lots of tall buildings, plenty of familiar signs. Then there were the first signs you were about to experience a close encounter of a very personal kind. My stomach tightened because I knew ground zero was just around the corner. It was a vast empty concrete hole marking the spot that would forever be a hole in the heart of the nation. Damage still clearly visible. Construction on a massive scale underway in a three-story deep hole, once topped by a seven-story mountain of smoldering, twisted, pulverized debris. I, like so many, was drawn to take a long, slow, close look at where terror struck and hope now beckons. A year later, most of the World Trade Center debris is removed and the process of renewal is underway. The Pentagon has been repaired, and there's grass growing again in the field in western Pennsylvania where Flight 93 crashed. A huge hole marks the place and time of pain and masks the scar on the soul of the nation. It's incredible. It's absolutely devastating. Why did you have to come here to see this? As I feel to do this, and I'm like, I don't have the words to explain how I feel now and I'm almost crying. It's kind of overwhelming. Everywhere I looked, lots of people were looking at the signs of remembrance, respect, and reverence. Many spoke solemnly and strangely in whispers despite the roar of heavy machinery. I left Ground Zero with images and feelings that will never leave me. But I've also learned we're at getting close to a crisis point in terms of volunteerism. We need people to step up if they truly want to make their hometowns, their home communities safer and more secure. Uh, it's not just enough to thank those who are doing the job now. We need our younger generation to stand up and step up and, uh, and take their place in the ranks of our firefighters and emergency medical personnel.
And that was about the reaction. It was intended to be a mini ha-ha, just a little joke, and that was about the reaction it got. And I thought, well... Anything you'd like to say to the ranks in the newsroom at WBRE TV? <laughs> and why Well, you? rank is a very good word. Uh, uh, well, well chosen. Uh, what I would say, and uh, I'll do a Jimmy Connors. I'll look right into the camera when I do this. You know what? My nose look big. Uh, yes. <laughs> guys, I miss you. Uh, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to think about how much I miss television. But I, while may not miss television as that much because I'm still on it a lot, I miss the hell out of all of you. And I ask you to keep the faith, faith hang in there. Uh, don't lose sight of why we do it is what we do. Uh, and who we really work for. And that's the people of our of our great northeastern Pennsylvania. So uh, see you on the farm, and no, the lighting is bad in here. It makes my hair look white. And, and uh, the last thing I want to say to that, all of you is, where's my staff? Hey, Mark, this is for you. Yeah. Couldn't that sound pop there? That's green. That's antifreeze. Antifreeze used to keep the... <coughs> So if you look in here, you can see it all in here. Looks like it's coming out of the radiator area. Can't really tell because the thing is there, but that's a problem. This ain't good. That is a problem. So.